Good afternoon, you beautiful humans. We are going to dive a little deeper into the vertebral subluxation complex and learn on how to ask questions in a way that encourage patients to see the bigger picture on their own rather than allowing them to be complacent with fixating on their one little puzzle piece. So let's see a different way of looking at the VSC. We're going to start off with kinesiopathology, which is the imprecise movement or lack of movement resulting in pathology. So spinal kinesiopathology is the unusual positioning or motion of the vertebra, which is expressed by the patient's restricted ability to turn, bend, and move around normally. This is why we evaluate the range of motion in our patients. This imprecise movement of the spine is typically caused by the accumulation of microtraumas over time. Typically, in our case, we often see poor posture. Lack of motion is typically due to immobilization, which is the person who sits all day at work and then comes home to sit on the couch and watch Netflix for the rest of the night, or those who are in the hospital or on bed rest, etc. Over time, this is a major contributor to the development of arthritis. Moving on to myopathology, the dis-ease of muscle tissue. Immobilization or the lack of motion in those uh, vertebral segments leads to muscle contracture and changes in the tone of the local musculature. As you can imagine, improper position of the spine would lead to one part becoming tighter or spastic, and others to weaken or lose tone. This is why our patients, this is what our patients are feeling when they say, yeah, you know, my back's just a little tight, but I think it's muscular. Uh, they aren't technically wrong, but you can work on that muscle all day long and it will never make sustainable change to the structure. Thus, the problem isn't actually solved. These muscular changes are a major component to the compensation patterns that we see. This is one re reason why patients may feel pain in one area, but the problem is really in another. Histopathology. This is changes in, in tissues caused by disease. This includes the inflammation that occurs around the fixated joint and impaired circulation to the joint, which results in decreased healing. We know inflammation can be a good thing, but chronic inflammation leads to changes in the actual histology of the surrounding tissues, which causes them to be in a weakened state, thus more susceptible to injury. Neuropathology, the dis-ease of the nervous system. Changes in spinal reflexes can occur, for example, improper or loss of postural reflexes. This is why we hear patients say, this is why we hear patients say, I have poor posture and it hurts to try to sit straight. I should work on that. Should I get a brace or that alarm thingy for between my shoulders to remind me to sit up straight? First of all, no, no, never. That just weakens everything, but that's this that isn't for today. We'll save that for another time. Uh, posture should remain in the subconscious state where it belongs. Our body knows how to combat external forces like gravity and movement, but when we're subluxated, our brain doesn't receive the information it needs to properly control this postural reflex. Neuropatholo neuropathology also includes the irritation to the nerves, which is often ex expressed as pain in the region and throughout that nerve's pathway. When this nervous system is in a state of disease, our perception of reality is altered and pain blocks the other signals our bodies need to function properly. This is why a patient with a flare-up is in such a hypersensitive pain state. Now moving on to the next component of today, uh, asking better questions. So here's an example of four different questions that we can ask. So we have clarifying questions. These help us better understand what has been said. In many conversations, people speak past one another. Asking clarifying questions can help uncover the real intent behind what it is said. These help us understand each other better and lead us toward relevant follow-up questions, like can you tell me more, and why do you say so? Both fall into this category. People often don't ask these questions because they tend to make assumptions and completely uh, and complete any missing parts themselves, which is we really should avoid doing because that's when we miss the patients who have a disconnect and we don't notice it because we assume that they do. Uh, adjoining questions uh, are used to explore related aspects of the problem that are ignored in the conversation. Questions such as, how would this concept apply in a different context? So our laser-like focus on a daily basis uh, on immediate task often inhibits our asking more of these exploratory questions, but taking time to ask them can help us gain a broader understanding of something. Funneling questions are used to dive deeper. We ask these to understand how an answer was derived, to challenge assumptions, and to understand the root causes of problems. This is right up our alley. How did you come to that conclusion? What makes you think that? Like, what has made you think that this is a muscle issue? Now, elevating questions. This is also really important. These raise broader issues and highlight the bigger picture. They help you zoom out. Being too, too immersed in an immediate problem makes it harder to see the overall context behind it. So you can ask, taking a step, 
to step back, what are the larger issues? Or are we even addressing the right question? These questions take us to a higher playing field where we can better see connections between individual problems. So obviously, this is really important for what we're talking about today. This is taking the pain concept and getting them to understand the actual long-term effects of arthritis development, et cetera. So leaders, which we all are, should encourage people to ask more questions based on the goals that they're actually trying to achieve instead of having them rush to deliver answers. Go out there, ask some questions, and get them to see the bigger picture.